What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going down? What's shaking? Welcome to Jonathan Souls Podcast. This is Jonathan Soul speaking with you now. Here at Jonathan Soul Sundays, what we do up and through here is we talk to African American, Africans from the diaspora, people that make stuff, people that write, people that draw, people that create, uh, artists, writers, engineers, business people, people who make the kind of world that they want to live in. So if you ever wanted to do something different in your life, this is the show to listen to. Why? Because I'm talking to the people who are doing it right now. Check it out. John for Soul Sundays. I got the honor and privilege of talking to the operator, the creator of your favorite online comic book store, mine, peepgamecomics.com. Do you prefer Imani, uh, Mr. Uh, Latif? How do you, what do you prefer? No, Imani is perfect. Imani, solid, right on. So listen, Imani, let me let me get right into it. Um, your comic book shop is, is one of the most popular ones online. There are other comic book shops out there. I liken the experience uh, of going to your bookstore, like I, I told you offline when I went to uh, Brother Man, the three brothers who started uh, Brother Man Comics, they had a, a comic shop in West Philly. And mm-hmm. uh, it was just a groovy experience. Um, tell me, how did you... Uh, come to start an online comic book shop. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned Brother Man. He was one of the first titles we carried on Peep Game. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> when I first started out, we actually considered, like, Brother Man sort of, like, where, whereas, like, for Image, like, Invincible or for Marvel, Spider-Man is their, their you know, um, their, their flagship title, we, right. we definitely considered Brother Man, you know, the foundation of what we wanted to do. Uh-huh. So um, I actually got the chance to, you know, talk to Dawood, and he was, you know, very, I'm, I'm forever in their debt for letting me, you know, carry their book the first time out. But um, um, I started in 2014, and um, it, I started it with the help of uh, Victor Dandridge out of Columbus, Ohio. Okay. Um, and he gave me permission to carry his entire catalog of books. He had like several books that he had in print and um, I picked up all of his digital files and we loaded them up to the website and we got the ball rolling. Um, I built the website myself. Uh, I'm a graphic designer by trade. So I was able to, you know, handle the back end of that. And um, okay. we just got, we just got started with the, you know, with a simple proof of concept. I wanted to see, you know, black people buying, you know, black themed and black produced comic books. So, so out of, as a graphic designer, I mean, you, you, you have probably have a lot of different skill sets. Why did you choose to apply them to an online comic book store? Um, it was a, it was a, um, it was a simple solution to a, a personal, um, I guess goal I wanted to, to accomplish. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Are you familiar with uh, Maggie Anderson's Our Black Year? Maggie Anderson. Um, no. In, in like she, she's um she's fairly popular now. She wrote a book called Our Black Year. Okay. And she basically took a year and she dedicated it to purchasing 100% black for a year. Wow. Right? So and it was like and she talks about, you know, the trials and, you know, tribulations of, you know, trying to accomplish that. But, you know, she did all these creative things like, you know, she bought gift cards for, you know, black owned McDonald's and she would spend those gift cards, you know, around town. She bought gift cards to black owned gas stations. She traveled across, you know, this out of in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So she did a lot of traveling. She like insisted on, you know, trying to find, you know, you know, buy black for everything in her home. And it was really so when you got down to like things like toilet paper and you know dishwashing liquid to get really got hard, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and I wanted to do something like that, and I thought you know it should be very easy for me to support. You know, I buy you know I'm a comic book fan. I buy comic books every Wednesday. Uh-huh. I was thinking like it should be very easy for me to buy, you know, black created a black owned comic book every Wednesday for at least uh-huh. a year. So you're and one of those you're one of those cats that has a pull list. Not really. I just um every Wednesday you know, they they don't I mean, yeah, I'm, 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 there, I'm there buying I'm buying books, but not I don't have a pull list. I got friends that have pull lists and okay. like, you know, 
Gotcha. I don't. I don't got. I'm not. I'm not um, balling like that. But definitely, <laughs> I figured I could do something small, like buy a black comic book. Okay. Once a week, um, you know, fifty two weeks, and so immediately, it was interesting how it got complicated. It was. It was hard for me to find books, or you know, I, I found some books and that had hadn't been you know hadn't been published in several years and mm-hmm. like their websites were down or things like that so i wanted to create a solution you know my first goal was to carry 54 or 52 books so that anybody could buy um you could buy one black comic book per week um for a year wow you know, support, support black uh, creators one black comic book per year, per week for a whole year. So, did you accomplish your goal? Yeah, within a year, we we carried fifty two books, um, which like was our first goal, uh-huh. and then uh, soon after that, we were up to a hundred. And right now, we're we're slowly but surely, you know, well, we're fairly soon we'll be at two hundred. We're at one eighty right now. Wow, that's incredible! That's incredible. So, I'm guessing they're male, female artists. Uh, can you tell us a little bit? Just rattle off some of the titles that you carry. Um, all right, so we we carry um, one of our, our one of the best publishers that we carry right now happens to be Rosarium Publishing. Okay. Um, and under that we have several you know titles. Um, Kid Code by John Jennings. Mm-hmm. Um, we have uh, Ajala, um, Maddie's Rocket by um, uh, Tim Fielder. Uh-huh. Um, Day Black by Keith Cross, Route Three, um, and um, those are some of the you know more popular titles that we carry. Mm-hmm. But um, and I have there's... each and every one of those titles. <laughs> 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 I gotta go yeah. back and make sure I get issue. Now, the drag, the only problem, the only right. problem that I have is that some of those books I have to wait a little longer for number two to come out. Because Kid right. Cole, the art was so fucking awesome. Okay, yeah. It's the internet so I can cuss. It's so fucking yeah. awesome. I was like, where's number two? You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, but uh, a lot of them, you know, their series and so forth. Uh, Route 3, I think I'm on issue number three of Route 3. One Nation. Um, yeah, One Nation. Yeah, One Nation, that's crazy. They just got a new cover with that brother who did uh, Valmar. So it, yep. it's, it's a lot of it's a lot of artists, guys, gals. Um, some crazy books you got on there, like this one book, um, something gear. I'd have to flip through the website, but it's just very artsy. It's not oh, like yeah. it's a linear story. It's just all over the place. And, uh, and so the, the experience is really groovy, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, it's funny. I hadn't done, I was doing politics for a while to stop because it seemed all of a drag. And then I found some sites like yours and I said, well, shit, these books are so great. I'll talk about the books. And so yeah. I started talking about these books. Now, um, I noticed that you did an interview with a brother on Facebook who's a comic artist. Do you remember? You remember that? You talking about Anthony Piper? Yeah, the brother who did Trill League. Yes. So tell me about that experience. You being a, a bookstore, uh, you running a bookstore, and now you ventured into the, the, the podcast aspect. How was that? Um, the time wise is kind of difficult, but his his podcast alone, like has you know, has at least I think maybe eight hundred some downloads. I think right now, wow. and it's like one of the is one of the more popular things I've ever done. Um, but he's such a um, Anthony is such of a um, you know, popular and um, really uh. He is uh, what he's doing is very polarizing, definitely. Um, okay. He's got people, you know, talking, um, you know, and he, he's created a lot of buzz around what he's doing, and you know, um, brought a lot of attention to black comic book creators. Mm-hmm. Speaking of attention, how have you brought attention to your site? Um, the main thing I've been trying to do is build a community around what I've doing, what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, mainly on Twitter is okay. that I found that the audience is a lot younger. Mm-hmm. It's a lot more aggressive. Mm-hmm. They're, uh, they're actively seeking out 
you know, comic books and comic book creators. They're getting into the whole comic book scene in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, they are, they, you know, they're, they're actively seeking out, you know, creators. And it's, it's a perfect, it's been, you know, a great opportunity to uh, meet creators and also to meet fans and, and sort of build that, you know, community around what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Facebook is great, but I've noticed like that younger audience is definitely you know you know the the fandom and the and the um the buzz is definitely happening on on twitter yeah i think that we're in a renaissance right now mm-hmm. uh you and i were i guess you call it conversation on twitter and uh, i was i was telling you that the the support that black creators are getting say on kickstarter is so right. heavy i'm starting yeah. to see white folks throw out black characters just so they can, yeah. just so they can crowdfund and get, and then I start clicking through. Let me see the pictures. I'm like, oh right. man, you know, not that right, I don't right. necessarily want to support the, the, you know, the white boy, but I gotta, I gotta support my folks first. You know what right. I mean? Because it's been a lull for a minute. I mean, uh, things go in cycles, and so you know, there was a, there was a like a, a resurgence, I think, around the time when Brother Man was popular in the '90s, but um, they were the only ones. That was really getting limelight like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a time when they was being sold in Toys R Us, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And um, but there was only one. Now it's tons of them, right? You know. So so speaking of tons, tell us some of your more popular titles uh, that you carry in Peep, over at PeepGameComics.com. Well, like I mentioned, um, Bounce is the number one bestseller on our website. I got that. Uh-huh. I got that. That's the bo- the uh, the uh, bouncer. Who's uh, right. who works at the bar? Who's like kind of philosophical and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, right, right. And, by, funny, and funny as hell. Right, right. By Chuck Collins. Yep. And, um, the next one is actually what you were you mentioned earlier, Kid Code. Kid Code. Just I'm just giving you guys a color commentary. Just imagine graffiti and Funkadelic. Parliament Funkadelic had a baby, and that right. baby could draw. That's yep, what baby. you get. With Kid Code, it's crazy, right? And uh, and John Jennings is a definitely um, as a just as an individual, he's done a he's done a lot to really push this this renaissance that you that you called it. You coined um, John Jennings is a Sith Lord. He's the one yeah. that we've been looking for <laughs> because and when I looked at Kid Code, I was like, okay, this is kind of fun, kind of funky, whatever. And then I went into some stuff like uh, some other work that he did, which was mm-hmm. just mixed media fine art madness. It yep. was it was it was it was blackness like distilled to the nth degree. It was it was fucking it was it was beautiful. Yep, him and um him and Stacy Robinson are really good. And um so yeah, number three. Uh, let's do. Let me do the top five real quick. Uh-huh. So we had. So like this year, Bounce is the bestseller. Kiko, Ajala, um, It's Nana that just that just came out mm-hmm. in the last couple of weeks, uh-huh. and um, Maddie's Rocket, mm-hmm. number two. Mm-hmm. Those are our top five. But like, um, but the now, other now, one. Let me break in because I can't help because I'm passionate about the book. So Ajala is like this teenage girl who. You know, dresses up in a mask. And I think she got some nunchucks or some kind of stick or whatever, kind of like a daredevil kind of analog, and, yeah, and yeah. beats up the little bad people in the neighborhood. But then she has to balance, you know, what I mean, her other life with her parents, and she's a student the whole bit. And then um, what was the other one? Uh, it was a job. Maddie's uh, it's, it's Nana and uh, Maddie's Rocket. So it's it's Nana. It's like a six. I think it's a sixty-page book or something, something like that. Hundred-page yeah, book. It's a graphic novel. A graphic novel, and um, the art is different. You know, from the cover than the inside. Both art is dope. You know, the the cover art is a little more mainstream, comic booky, and then the mm-hmm. inside art is a little bit more impressionistic. You know, sketch kind of like. But it's a very African flavored story about. You guys know like the demagogue at Hercules and he's trying to be a human, but he has his father who's a god. Well, it's kind of like that, except a Nazi is the god. That's the spider god. That's the, the trickster, the storyteller. And so right. he's kind of going through the city, you know, and he has to 
battle crime in his own way. But then on the flip side, there are other deities that have escaped into the realm, and uh, he's dealing with it. So it's just it's a, it's a great concept. And then of course Maddie's rocket. Oh Jesus Christ, <laughs> man, Maddie's rocket. So so it's a that's another fine art kind of thing out of Diesel Funk Tim Felder, right? Tim Felder, yep. Felder out over there. And um, what's beautiful about that is it kind of I say steampunk, but it's you know punk is usually used when they try to mix the past and the present or the past and the future. So mm-hmm. you know this sister who grew up sharecropping, she became this famous pilot. Uh, she's being interviewed and and da da da, da and it's like it's like flying motorcycles and rockets. And the art style is kind of like a silent film mixed media kind of comic book approach. It's just crazy. So right. all of these treasures I'm finding on peepgamecomics.com. So let's say there's somebody out there who's an artist, who's a writer, you know, they have a property that they want to they want to get distributed online. How would they how can they get in contact with you? What's the process? Um the main, the, the easiest way is uh, to visit the website, and if you go to the very bottom, there's a submit a title button okay. that you can click, and um, and it walks you through, basically, you know, it walks you through the basics of uh, how you set up an account and how you can submit a book. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So, um, I just put my book up on Amazon. I have like an ebook out there, a sci-fi book called Malcolm Mars, and I think with Amazon. It's like a like a seventy thirty split or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I guess all of that stuff is explained in your form and in the in the account creation process. Yeah, yeah. I um, I take twenty five percent, and um, uh, the the creators get seventy five. Oh, that's a better deal than Amazon. Yeah, I try to I try to do do right by my creators. You know, the best. You know, try to offer them the best. You know, arrangement mm-hmm. and. Uh, and a lot of the decisions I've made, you know, I'm looking to, I always try to keep, you know, my creators in mind. I, gotcha. You know, there's some, there's some ideas that are out there that I could have uh, jumped on, but I've decided to, you know, steer clear of those because I don't think it's the best fit for the creators I'm working with, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Like you had mentioned earlier, earlier about, um, you know, having to wait, you know, the, the time you have to wait between, um, issues, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so I think um, that's why it helps to have a website like this. So like, you know, in between that wait, there's still other titles that you can pick up, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, um, but that's sort of like, that's one of the main reasons why I sort of steer clear of like subscription models because okay. I just don't think um, um, in this niche, I don't think we produce enough titles on a regular basis to support you know, that type of, um, that type of business model. Okay. You know what I mean? It's sort of like if, 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 you know, if, if, uh, if books from black creators, you know, indie creators was coming out every Wednesday mm-hmm. or every, you know, every two weeks, even, you know, I, I would consider, you know, something like that because there would be a ton of, you know, content coming out on a regular basis. But, you know, the time, the timetable that I typically work with is sort of like, I'm, more on a, a quarterly, you know, basis, so okay. to speak. Okay. You know, so books come out, you know, about a dozen or so books come out, that, at least on my site, you know, about every quarter. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I've, you know, done fairly well with that type of, you know, format. Um, and it's sort of like, I wish it was faster, but at the same time, it's like, you know, being realistic, you know, it is, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Now, there was a time back in the day, when I say back in the day, I'm talking 80s and 90s, where comics would come out every month. Mm-hmm. But that was DC and Marvel. And then even they started slacking off. Where and yeah. I think it's just because their artists were and their workers were just overloaded to where they actually fell back to once every couple of months and some of the better books. It, was, it ended up to be, you know, about two and a half months, something like that. And people would bitch and complain about it. But um, if there's a, a, a nice balance between quality work right. and nice delivery, I think maybe you've struck that. So so, yeah. so tell me this. Tell me what's been some of your biggest challenges during this whole process. You started in 2020, 2014 is 2016. What have been some of your biggest challenges? 
Um, I don't know. I guess you know. I wish this, I I need to get the word out a lot more. Okay. Um, and I'm definitely at a at a stage where it's sort of like um, additional funding will probably help in terms of maybe not so much an investor, but you know some additional you know help on the back end to really push the concept. I think I think we're definitely at that stage. You know I've sort of you know bounced around the idea of uh, crowdfunding. Okay. I haven't quite landed on that, but definitely I think we're at a, we're at a stage where we could if with a with the additional help mm-hmm. or some type of strategic partnership, we probably could really, you know, make this thing, you know, really popular, you know, yeah. um, and, you know, go to destination, not just for, you know, fans, but also for, you know, creators too. So. Of course, of course. And uh, not only are we seeing a renaissance in terms of content creation, I mm-hmm. feel like we're seeing a renaissance in terms of support. Because yeah. I've seen some 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 Kickstarter campaigns. It's one campaign. I don't know if you heard of this comic book called Black. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they these three brothers sound like the Sims. You know, you know, they started the three brothers, and then they had a goal. They, I think they hit their goal in like three fucking days. Yeah, and that's just they, like Anthony. Anthony hit his in like hours. Wow. He hit, and I, I think at the end of the day, I think he hit his goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then um, they hit a stretch goal, and this, that, and the other. Like I said, there's some white content creators that are starting to push out black characters. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just, just because that's what's hot right now. So, yeah, I mean, now that may something that may be something you figure into your calculation. Now, what have been some of your greatest triumphs? Some of your greatest victories during this process? Wow. Um... Greatest victories. Uh, I think. I think they're there. I think it's yet to come. I'm looking for. I'm still looking for that type of, you know, victory. I know. I know. For one. One of the the biggest victories I, I felt like I had was in the very beginning when um, when I was able to get Brother Man. Okay. The first time because I thought I was going to have to I thought it was going to be very very complicated I thought I was going to have to really do some things to convince them and you know and um, and it turned out like within a day he was sending me books and we were up and running and I always thought so I'm looking for for uh, you know something like that again you know what I mean like to be able to work with a bigger publisher and uh bring some like you know fairly you know bigger titles to to peep game i think that would be my next big uh moment i guess mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um where do you see yourself in five years with this uh with, with your business with your uh with your projects where do you see yourself in five years all things being equal you get the funding that you need you get the support best case scenario five years where do you see yourself um, in five years, I can definitely see my platform being far more, um, international. Okay. Um, what I've been following closely is, um, the, um, the scene in, on the African continent. Bro, you ain't, brother, you ain't said nothing, man. You know, so, the Africans is, is, is kicking out quality books, man. And I just, I just saw. Um, on Facebook, I just saw, I think it was Lagos had a Comic Con. What? And it was, and I, yeah, it was a Lagos Comic Con, and um, I was seeing some. I was looking at some of the work, and I was like, wow. And then um, I had talked for a moment with uh, um, an app developer out of Africa. They were interested in, you know, you know, collaborating on something like that. And I, I, I want to, you know turn my website into an app that I can introduce to basically the African continent, you know, uh, because for them, you know, mobile is far more um, expansive than it is even, even in, it is here. You know what I mean? And I read an article recently where they're talking about how um, a lot of books are being sold on mobile devices because 
a lot of you know cities on the African continent don't have access to bookstores or libraries like we do here. Interesting. So, you know, and I've and I've been following a um, an ebook. Um, I think it was, it's a sister or a couple sisters actually. Um, they just started an ebook um, business that they've been, you know, they've gotten funded, you know, a couple times, um, and they're they're out of Africa as well, and um, and they're like sort of like they're sort of sort of really pushing, you know, a lot of ebooks and a lot of authors that way digitally, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, so I. I I want to get be a part of that, and I saw. I definitely see in five years or so that I want to be, you know, mentioning, you know, that not just the Renaissance here in the states, but the rena- Renaissance of Black comic books, you know, internationally. So that's one of the that's one of my, you know, major goals for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think that this Renaissance that we're speaking about has a global synchronicity. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I, I I haven't been looking at the mobile app aspect, but I've been looking at the websites, and uh, it's not like they're copying. You know, that's what you expect. You know, mm-hmm. they, they would have an African version of this, that, and the other. I mean, and there are some similarities. I mean, it's only so many superpowers somebody can have, but the right. themes and the character development is very African, from what I can tell. And so I think that's dope, man. I think that kind of collaboration with the motherland is, is definitely something that's uh that's that's going to be big so listen any questions i, I didn't ask you money any any closing thoughts and then just give us your contact information so if fans and creators want to reach out to you they can um you know of course you can you can reach them i'm on most social media so you can hit me up on twitter at at PG Comics with an X dot, and um, you can find me on Facebook at Peep Game Comics, and you can always you know find me on my website. And my links are there also at, at peepgamecomics.com. Um, uh, and that's about it. I I did have some you know stuff I've learned that I wanted to share. Do it. Go ahead, man. Sure. You got the phone. Um, like some stuff I've learned. Um, I've learned like this is just three things, but I, I have more. But um, number one, I've learned that um, you know, we were talking about this renaissance of black comic book creators and black comic books. Um, not everyone's intentions are the same. Explain. Right? So, for instance, I've noticed that you have some independent comic book creators, some black comic book creators that are they're fully embracing the independent, you know, comic book scene. Okay. You know what I mean? They have a story that they want to tell. And they want to do it independently, you know, on their own, you know, you know, build their own audience, build their own company, things like that, you know. Right. Um, but I noticed, like, one of the things I, I, um, I guess it was sort of a roadblock is that I, I found out fairly early that just because like some creators might have like an independent book or title out, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're looking to build their career around this book Interesting. you know what I mean? so they want to use it um, as a platform to go back on the plantation a, it's a black well not so much plant, but it's they're looking for professional work you know what i mean and they're definitely using this book or that title as a as a, a means to an end you know what i mean okay. and so approaching them about so like you will find so if you like you're picking up a book and say oh wow this is awesome and it's but it's like it's a very short run and you might not hear from that creator again, but you'll see their name, you know, pop up all of a sudden, like they've, they've, they're now they're, they've, they've gotten that notoriety. Mm -hmm. They're not as committed to that independent work as they they were before. You know what I mean? Uh, I think Um, I understand where you're going. So, so it's like, but it's no, it's not a knock, but it's definitely a difference. And I've noticed like definitely in this community, there's definitely there's um there are a lot of black indie creators out there, uh-huh. and there are a lot of black professional creators out there, mm-hmm. and the intentions and the goals aren't always aligned. You know what I mean? And so, okay. and I, I only say that from a retailer's perspective. Like yeah. as as a fan, I can support or we can support all of them. You know what I mean? Right. As a retailer. I find myself um, having to approach each of those audiences differently. You know what I mean? 
Gotcha. Just knowing, that, knowing that they have different intentions and different goals, mm-hmm. I, so I, I sort of have to meet each of those creators where they're at. So, so uh, what's what's uh, so what, what my takeaway as a fan is, I knock on your door like, yo man, where's number three? Where's issue number three? And then you look at me like, I don't know what to tell you. Right, right, right. <laughs> he, he, like got some work, he got some work from DC and Marvel, man. I, I mean, brother answered his calls, man. I don't know what to tell you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's sort of like, it's like, um, like, like for instance, I love what Anthony Piper is doing. Right. Um, but at the same time, he's like, he's just as much as, he's just as much into animation as he is into comics, right? Sure, right. So you can already tell that his end goal is definitely far more towards the animation side than it is towards the comic book side. Right. Not to, not, not to say that he might put out he might put out some some bomb comic books in the near future, but right. I'm fairly certain the next time we see Anthony, well one, he's already got work with Marvel now. Wow. You know? That's that's it's cool, like, man. Okay. He 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 created enough buzz to get their attention. Mm-hmm. So he's a, he's working he's working professionally, number one. And number two he definitely is already pushing this thing and pitching this thing towards studios. I, I'm fairly certain of that, you know, because gotcha. he's sharing all those, um, all those uh, character designs, mm-hmm. you know, for for animation. So I'm fairly certain that's the, his next step. But that's but that's sort of what you see is sort of like some of these some of these books, they look really awesome. But I know that. You know, you look at the person's background and say, okay, that person works in television. Okay, there's a fair chance that he's trying to push this thing into a, um, you know, onto television and and things like that. Whereas it's not always just about comic books, so per se. You know what I mean? So so all these creators definitely have, you know, different goals and aspirations and, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. Gotcha. Now, what would be lesson number two? You mentioned there was a couple of things. Yeah, number two, lesson. number two is um, it's like you know re- reiterate what I said before. There's a difference between independent and professional. Okay. Um, um, and I've ran into some some roadblocks in the sense that, um, some professionals I've talked to, they don't want to be associated with in the, some independence because. You know, you get in a conversation about, okay, this will hurt my brand. Hmm. I've gotten into some brand conversations with some artists. Okay. And uh, and I only want to bring this up because um, I remember when um, we were talking about the 90s, you know, Milestone has come, you know, has made this big announcement about coming back, right? Sure, I've been hearing that, yeah. And, um, um, before and, and, and rest and rest in power to, to Wayne Duffy. To Wayne Duffy, yes, go ahead. Go yes, 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 sir. And right. um when the, before they made their huge announcement about coming back and the new ownership and all that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. I made a big announce I, I I made this big call to all these independent creators. I you know, I shouting it on Facebook and anybody who would listen, I said, Look, y'all need to get y'all stuff together because milestone is coming. Okay. And I think, and I was under the impression that they were going to take a lot of attention away from what a lot of indie creators were doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. They were going to shift the conversation to these professionals who were going to have a, like a huge marketing budget. They were going to have articles in magazines and newspapers. They were going to have all this attention, and it's going to steer it away from what, what independents were doing. Sort of like when Black Panther is like very popular right now, uh-huh. but I'm not sure if, you know, what people were telling me, it was like, oh, well, you know, rising tide, you know, uh, rises all ships. And I haven't necessarily seen that. Okay. Um, because it's definitely um, a difference between when you're talking about diversity in the professional comic book arena. And we're talking about diversity in the independent comic book arena. Mm. You know what I mean? See, man, so you, when, you you hitting on some ah, hitting on some pressure points, man. Yeah. Oh, well, see, that's the thing. It's like I only had to I had to touch on it only because it's not like it's only because there's such a huge. I, from where I'm sitting, as 
I can see that I can see the differences clearly, you know, because as a retailer, you know, you know, I'm trying to, you know, appeal to all these audiences and, you know, the majority of the people I'm working with are independents, right? They're like, they have full control over their books and stuff like that. I've ran into some, and I know that if I want to really grow, you know, I'm going to, it's going to be a point where I'm actually dealing with bigger publishers and they might have different demands, you know, but there's definitely a difference between when we, when we talking about diversity, there's a difference. There's a difference when we're talking about, when we're talking about, for instance, um, you know, when I talk about day black, for instance, right. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about him as an independent comic book creator. And I love that book. Right. That's, my, that's one of my favorite books. I just read number six. I'm going to let you, I think you should review it. Number six is out. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to be out uh, October 5th. Mm -hmm. And um, what Keith Cross is doing, I like the fact that he is like, you could tell he has no comic book background. Okay. You know what I mean? His approach is he's, he's approaching the comic book um, platform the way he's most comfortable. And I love that he's approaching it that way, as opposed to saying, oh, this is how comic books are made. I got to do it this way, you know? Right. Right. Um, and that's why I, I really love that book. But I know, um, uh, but it's something that a major publisher might, you know, steer, steer clear of, you know what I mean? Um, and I want to say that, and so we're not having a lot, you know, but we're not really talking about Keith as much as we're talking about, you know, Ta-Nehisi, you know, and right. like in Panther and when we were talking about how many, you know, black authors or, or black creators are at Marvel and all that kind of stuff, you know, that's a different conversation than, okay, what's the next independent black book? You know what I mean? Or what are black artists doing, you know, that's new and different? So I just want to share that, you know, that that difference in a, in a, there's some, like for instance, there's some, there's, you'll be amazed at how many black professional artists and authors that are actually working. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's sort of like when we talk about, um, you know, supporting these black artists and creators and stuff like that, they're very quiet. It's like, if it, you wouldn't know they were black unless you really, you would have to do some real serious research. You know, right. I, I found out like, you know, some of my favorite you know, artists from the nineties. And I had no idea that they were black. And wow. I just come across come across, you know, but it's sort of like they're not they're not making but it's interesting, like they don't make a point of announcing that they're black. And the publishers don't make a point of really promoting them that they're black. Because if they did promote that they're black in this racist culture, that would hurt a little bit of their buzz. Even though the quality of work is there, they're they're hitting their deadlines the whole bit. So I've yeah, been sitting quiet yeah. while you while you've been hitting this heavy point, and so I gotta talk. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta say something. Look, man, I can't get excited about Wakanda. Okay, I can't get excited <laughs> about Wakanda if you guys aren't talking about big city with with Daoud and them. They, you know, brother man. I can't get excited because you know why? This is a historical cycle. Okay, yeah. as soon as black people start getting hot. The white companies go and start skimming that talent off the top. Okay? Yeah. So when I buy uh, Day Black, and I bought the digital and the print, when I buy Day Black, I know that's going into a, a black uh, professional, black company, etc. When I yeah. buy uh, a, a, a Marvel and shit, or Image, or Variant Internet, that's not a black company. Okay? Yeah. Fuck Distribu <laughs> uh, uh, diversity. It's about ownership. Okay, we got to take a long-term view. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Every generation starts over, generally speaking, in the black community. Why? Because we don't have ownership and we don't have wealth to pass back, or it just not even just wealth, just a business to pass along to the next generation. And that shit has got to stop. Yeah. And so <laughs> you you said a lot for me because it's like what I found interesting when I first started doing this is that 
I was afraid I was going to turn a lot of creators off by um, being pro-black, right? But when I started to do the research as to how to approach black consumers, I, I found pretty early on that there was an extremely viable audience for comic books if I approach it right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, so yeah, I'm pro-black, but I'm not doing this. Um, I'm not selling black comic books just because um, I'm black. I'm doing this because black consumers really push the needle when it comes to pop culture. You right. know what I mean? Exactly. So Civil War, Civil Captain America Civil War it was was you know made millions of dollars off the popularity of the Black Panther. Bruh, and bruh. Black folks going I would have never, I would have never seen Captain America, uh, aka Avengers three, if it, if Black Panther wasn't in it. Now I right. might have got it on iTunes or or, or 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 whatever because of Ant Man, the Spider Boy, and the whole bit. But I would have right. never paid thirteen fucking dollars. And ten dollars yeah. for popcorn and and, and, and and sugar water, unless yeah. <laughs> Black Panther was there. You right. know? And they know this. Yes, but think about this. It's like that's the same reason why Will Smith is one of the highest paid um, action action movie creators. Samuel Jackson makes money. The Rock makes money. All these black um, action heroes. They make millions of dollars because we support them. If you, there's a Nielsen, um, and we can share this in the show notes. There's a Nielsen. Um, I studied a Nielsen um, report mm-hmm. um, that basically studied black consumers and talked about you know what we buy and the things that we you know watch on television the whole nine yards. Of course, at the top of that list is you know stuff like love and hip hop and all these, you know, made up award shows on BET and centric, right? Of right. course. But a good portion of like especially the films, we religiously go see action movies. Uh-huh. And when I look at that, I said, you know what, there's an opportunity there to um introduce black um uh, consumers to black comic books. Right. You know, to 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 superheroes and stuff like that because it's obvious they're already they're already buying act they're already buying into action movies you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it's like it's it's a easy transition into that's why Marvel and DC are so successful because it's, it's such an easy transition from you know these action films right? now here now here now here's here's the thing right right now I I mean if, if we just take it the, the idea of what you said black people drive pop culture in America that's right. true that historical. You can go back even to another art form like jazz. When the yep. joint was segregated, the white kids would hop the train down to the black neighborhoods to hear Dizzy and them play. Okay? And that shit happened so much that the white club owners uptown got hip to it, or downtown, whatever it was, got hip to it, and then they started to bring those black acts up. And then right. that's when they started getting the big notoriety in the white community, but the black people been known about them. The same thing happened. I think the same thing is happening here. You know, when I mean, you just talked about the Anthony brother, uh, uh, Piper, you know, right. he, he I mean, who knew about Trill but black people on, on Facebook? When I, I knew, I knew he blew up when my 15 year old son, right, uh-huh. out of the blue, because he doesn't, he's not a real, he knows I'm into comic books, but he's not a huge comic book guy. Right. Right. But I just out of the blue, he asked me, he said, hey, have you seen this um, Trill Robin? Like something he saw on on social media somewhere. Uh huh. Uh huh. And when he approached me, I said, "This dude got something." <laughs> he's not. Now see, he's look not what a, you just he's did. He's not a comic book. He's not a comic book guy. Right. But it was, but it, it got his attention. Right. Enough to know now to, to keep looking further. Right. 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 right, right so right. he's like, so he's looking for the next thing. He said, "Oh yeah, I saw he saw this on social media or something like that. Somehow it trended, right. and he got a hold of it." And now it's, it's 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 like and that's and that's the thing. It's sort of like um, yeah. And I share this with Anthony Piper, you know, in my uh, podcast. I was like, I'm waiting for somebody to do. I'm waiting for a Tyler Perry moment. Hmm. 
I'm, I'm waiting for somebody, and Anthony could do this, but I'm waiting for someone to create a comic book, right? Um, to create a series that's going to be very controversial. Not a lot of people going to like it, mm -hmm. but it's going to be very popular. There's going to be a lot of money. They're going to make a lot of money off of it, mm -hmm. and they're going to be so popular and have so much money. They're going to be able to really, you know, you know, bring some other artists in and you know, push some, create some other titles and do something like what Milestone did. Um, but it's going to be somebody that does something really. Um, <laughs> it's going to have to be the, like the ghetto lit version of comic books. It's going to like this. <laughs> well, see, that's but, the thing. But you, you think, can, I'm, you you think can... I'm joking? But from a distribution standpoint, uh -huh. I don't care about black comic books being in a comic book shop. Hmm. It's like the thing where we need to be is um, in Walmart in Family Dollar. Really? Yeah, from a distribution. Like, that's where we are. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not going to, we're not going to really break the, the, this barrier in terms of um, black comic book, you know, creating a black comic book audience until we're in distribution outlets where we are. You know what I mean? I think, like, for instance, like, I look at Black Lit all the time. I look at that section. Whenever I go to Walmart, I look at the Black Lit section. And oh, like, see, I, I, I have no idea what you're talking about because I haven't been to Walmart in years. There's a Black Literature section in Walmart? There's always a black lit. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like ghetto lit, or it'll have uh, what's the the preacher's the preacher guy? He always has a book out. Oh, um, you're talking about um, I know you're talking about the fat guy who's yeah. skinny and fat again. I know right. you're <laughs> <laughs> they always there's there's ton, there's like a little section. It's like you, some some are bigger than others, but yeah, you got like ten or so books. Well, say, like say, let me let me let me break in here. Let me break in here. This is this is yeah. this is where I got a little bit just a teeny bit of, of I can see the cycle. So. When yeah, Brother yeah. Man was popping, they was yeah. that book that you're referring to. Okay, they were, and as a matter of fact, around here in the house someplace, I got the issue. So they was hot, right? They was, just, you know, the art was dope. The writing was clever. You know what I mean? It was a black and white book, but, you know, but everything was just, every, all the pieces were aligned. And mm -hmm. they were so hot to the fact that they got on Arsenio Hall, which right. that's when I was in college. That was like the number one show. I mean, he... He didn't take the he didn't get the mantle from Johnny Carson. He took it, you know what I right. mean. And our, our Arsenio Hall was surprised himself. Like I'm talking about a comic book kind of deal. And right. so if you talk about controversy. I took my kid to to uh, Toys R Us, and we mm -hmm. would see Brother Man there. Issue one, two, three, and then issue five came out. Issue mm -hmm. five had all the police officers like hype on the cover because they were rioting because in the story. The villain had taken over. They said all the policemen got fired and blah, blah, blah. Right. They stopped mm. taking uh, Brother Man after issue five. And it was a write-up. Right. Uh, I can't remember. It was Newsweek or whatever. And it was real hype. So what I'm saying is that controversial aspect you're talking about, yep. it can only live and breathe in, <clears throat> in an independent situation. That's not going to oh. live and breathe in Walmart. That's what I'm saying. That's, that's, that's oh, yeah. the way I read history. Well, it depends. As I'm soon like, as I'm you thinking. get hot, as soon as you, I mean, you can hollow out, right? Mm -hmm. You can do the, you know, the Sambo type shit and everything and hollow out. But as soon as you have some authentic vibration, they, they're they going to they gonna mm -hmm. cut you loose. I mean, that's, or, or you get to the point where you're so big, they can't, they can't, um, they can't deny you. But either way, I know that as a distribution uh, set up, that's definitely the route to go as opposed to trying to chase, um, you know, diamond and all this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Really? Um, I think we have an opportunity, especially as black creators, uh -huh. we have an opportunity, like, once it's... Because if you look at, like, say, for instance, like, the whole what the, what's called ghetto lit or street lit type of movement, it's sort of like they made they build an audience around what they're doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, sort of like, they could sort of... They put them in a position where they could dictate you know, terms, I would imagine, you know what I mean? I'm not, you know, totally, you know, aware of the whole industry, but mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, those authors and those publishers, they were put it, they were in a position where they could like really, you know, you know, push the thing you know, like, cause once they knew, you know, once, because they had the numbers on their side, you okay. see what I'm saying? You so know, let like, me, you know, let me ask you this question. Cause you're, and I'm, and I'm tapping the business 
expertise and experience that you have, okay? Mm-hmm. Is it better to own something small or to rent something big? Own something small or rent something big? Um, all my business experience has been, has got me leaning towards the idea of owning something small. Only because I am, I've become extremely adverse to overhead. Mm-hmm. And the reason so, why, and, and I'm using that as a metaphor for for ownership and and, and building your brand, you mm-hmm. know, with a solid African American and I guess you could say progressive base. Because those white kids that came down, you know, to Harlem or whatever to hear the brothers play, I mm-hmm. mean, they was down there just because it was quality. They didn't have to what? change shit. You know, years ago, you know, when I was married, I took my wife to. This in, in Philly, it was this place called the Zanzibar Blue. Very mm. small jazz restaurant, right? Small hole in the wall. The waiters were superb. The food was off the chain. And uh, it was one of those places where you would see this limousine pull up and this old white dude get out and this hot black chick, about 20, 25 <laughs> years old. You knew this guy was a judge or something. You know, he was this, wow. It was one of those type places. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I mean, I thank yeah. God for people who can cross over back into the plantation. That's cool. But what I'm saying is, if we take a longer term view, I mm-hmm. think it may be. I mean, you just told me about connecting Afri- connecting with the African creators through the mobile app. I know because I'm in IT that most of the world access the Internet, particularly in Africa, through the phone. Yeah, yeah. To me... You know, hooking up with that kind of thing is 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 a better bet than hoping, you know, to get into some. I, I think brick and mortar is is is, is of the past. You just told me your boy yeah, found yeah. Trill on Facebook. He didn't find uh, a Black Panther or Black Lightning at Walmart. He found Trill League on Facebook. Well, I only say Walmart or places like that only because um, if the question is. How do you get in front of um, the black audience at, at large, uh-huh. the larger audience? Uh-huh. It's going to take a some type of distribution network like that, or like phones, definitely. But you yeah. know, as far as print, uh-huh. if, as far as print goes, you're not going to be able to do that. You know, distributing your book, you know, solely through um, comic book shops. You know what I mean? Like for instance, I uh, I just did like a library event. Okay. Uh, this last week, and um, the worm, the woman I was working with at the library, she thought I would be a good fit for this makers event, and I, and I was hesitant at first, mm-hmm. and it really wasn't going that well. I'm not wasn't sure why she would ask me to do this because all the like it was all a bunch of clubs where they were making robots and all this kind of stuff. Nobody was really coming to my table. Hmm. Then out of nowhere, two kids came up. And you would have thought they lost their mind. They saw my website. They saw my little poster. I was drawing a picture. And they could not believe, you know, that what they were seeing. There were two black kids. And wow. it was like, and they saw all the titles that I had on my website. Mm-hmm. And John, they didn't, they hadn't heard of one title on my website. Wow. They hadn't heard of any of it. Mm-hmm. And that said to me, I said, and I so I immediately I could see that all the progress that you were talking about, we're in the Renaissance mm-hmm. and in social media, especially on Twitter, we are blowing up. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm looking. I'm looking at what like Black Girl Nerds is doing, like mm-hmm. you know, or or Blurred Girl, and I'm following with that. I'm Dude, seeing like, they got they got power. They almost they destroyed. Have- that Nate they Parker have, joint, man. What's, what's, they have, what's, what's they that? have marketing power. Yeah. I'm seeing what they're doing. I'm yeah. seeing what Black Comics Chat is doing. I'm seeing, you know, all these movements, you know, these social movements happening, mm-hmm. you know, along with what we're doing in comics. It's sort of like we're part of the whole, you know, Black Twitter and everything that's coming out of that. We're a part of that. But there is quite a bit of distance between that and what's going on in the, the actually reaching people in the, on the street. You know what I mean? Um, 
I think like some of my, I think a lot of my success is due to the fact that I'm focusing online and I'm not mm-hmm. trying to literally actually make it have a brick and mortar where I'm selling comic books, you know, mm-hmm. um, I can build an audience online. I just had some people buy some books um, from London. Wow. You know, like I can see where these people are from. And that's very interesting. We were talking about popularity and jazz, uh-huh. right? And I've shared with you, um, and it's probably not like, you know, I have co- close to like 500 some registered users that are using the site, right? Incredible, incredible. I have no idea what their ethnicity is. Mm-hmm. Then for all I know, John, they could all be, half of them could be white, mm-hmm. you know? But I do know that um, black being pop culture is definitely um, something that gets everybody's attention. You know what I mean? And so, uh, which, you know, and it's like the more people that, you know, buy books and I get into what I'm doing, mm-hmm. the more confident that I am that, you know, this niche market is you know is definitely you know viable and can be viable you know in the future brother let me let me let me just say this man and i think we should probably bring this to a close because yeah, yeah you know i mean uh, it's just cool but i i want to have this conversation again yeah. what if you already are on the right track what if these alliances that you want to form with the producers in africa is the way to go. What if brick and mortar is out the door? What if the only people that's going to buy print is the hardcore music fans? Everybody else is going to get it through an app or their iPad or their i Android, whatever. I mean, you might already be halfway there. You know what I mean? I, 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 if I feel like when I hear you, you know, have this conversation about, you know, the, you know, the Walmart's nerd. It, it may be cool, you know what I mean? But the only people I know to go to Walmart's is my mom. <laughs> you know I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I mean, all my boys, right? I mean, when we was kids, we bought comics, right? But right. now I'm the only cat that's buying comics, and it's because probably I'm a writer, mm. right? You know, my other boy, he's, a, he's an airbrush artist. He's a commercial artist. I haven't heard he don't buy comics no more. He buys the books from those people that draw on deviant art. He buys those books. Mm. The, yeah, those yeah, yeah. tape coffee table joints. Right, you know right. What I right. mean? But to me, the people who are the, the process is what you describe with your son. Right? Mm-hmm. That's the next generation of comic book people. When I went right. to my comic book store uh, six miles away from here, I said, Hey man, you and I knew he I knew he didn't have no black books. I said, Hey man, you got a uh, day black? I just want to see what he said. They black? Oh, uh, 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 no. Uh, you got a uh, concrete park? Uh, what well, concrete park? What is that? And then after the, about the fifth time, he said, "Oh, I get it. Well, you want the march? We have uh, this book about." Well, yeah, judge. I was like, "Ain't that about a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that about a bitch?" <laughs> you know funny. what I mean? It's like, well, I can order it, but it's like, nah. You know what I mean? So all I'm trying to say, and this is the other thing. Talk about yeah. going fucking backwards. Yeah, These yeah. cats, like Concrete Park, right? Uh, like uh, like Teflon Funk, they got yeah. mixtapes with their fucking yeah. books, man. Black people is a trip. <laughs> I got. I what are you time. doing? Why you got a soundtrack with your comic? That's crazy. No, no, but like that's I would encourage, um, especially if you work independently. Yeah, you got to. Um, You've got to like. That's one. Of, that's a third and final thing that that I learned. There's not a lot of money in comic books, especially mm. if you talk about periodicals like issue one, issue two. Okay. You talk about profit margins that are very small. Okay. You know what I mean? So, um, the best way, bet financially, especially if you're in print, is to is to go the graphic novel route, um, and you got to find a way to push your character into other mediums and licensing. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, that's the other thing I like about Day Black. And I've seen some other people do it too. But he, not only did he come out with a comic book, but he also has a, uh, a short film about his about his book, right? Um, okay. 
he came out with the he came out with the short film. He's about I saw, to do, I saw that on YouTube. Yeah, and yeah. he's about he got to, he's about to do an art show. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He he's finding all these other unique ways to sort of push his character and push his concept out there. You've got to find a way to get your stuff into licensing because you know I got a, there's another guy. Um, he has a comic book, but he turned around. Now he just you you you've seen the the Kickstarter for uh, versus the versus game. You know what I mean? Hmm. That, that's a brilliant idea. You got to find ways. Um, in Urban Shogun, he's got a game too. You got to find ways to, you know, to push the concept outside of comic books because the print, just the book alone, is the, the margins are very, very, very small. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Um, and you got to find a way to, like, you know, if, if you wanted to have a, make a career of it, if you wanted to, like, Build a, build a, you know, you know, raise, you know, become independent, you know, be able to raise your family or, you know, have a, you know, livelihood. Mm-hmm. You gotta find a way to uh, monetize it, you know, past, past the the print book itself. You know what I mean? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, man, I, I can dig it. I, I, I'm looking back at my little, my little soundproofing little thing here that I'm gonna use to. I'm practicing for the audio book now. You know what I yes. mean? Uh, I, was, I was listening to some kind of conference where Brandon Easton, I believe that's the brother's name, uh, yeah, yeah. he was moderating. He, he does right. I, I got one of his books, A Horizon, I think, that I'm reading now. And uh, yeah, he talked mm-hmm. about, you know, <clears throat> taking your book and flipping it into these, you know, other other properties so folk have multiple ways to access your characters and stuff. So, right, right. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Wow, Mr. Latif, this has been a pleasure, and, and I've learned a lot, man, in this uh, conversation that we've had. Um, so once again, your, uh, your 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 URL and your contact info. PeepGameComics.com. That's comics with an X, so that's C-O-M-I-X.com. Um, you can find me on Twitter at PG Comics with an X, dot, and um, I'm on Facebook at PeepGameComics.com. Peep Game Comics and on Tumblr. Peep Game Comics. Yo, family, I know you enjoyed that conversation as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. This is Jonathan Soul speaking with you now. Then head on over to JonathanSoul.com and pick up my ebook, Malcolm Mars. Malcolm like the prophet, Mars like the planet. It's a sci fi ebook space opera. Talks about three brothers to take their families, pack them up in a homemade starship, kind of like an egg-shaped SUV, and they take them tomorrow to escape the violence, racism, the bullshit, basically. And they want to start a new life on the rare planet. It's a lot of love. It's a lot of high drama. It's a lot of high tech. And most of all, it's a lot of black pride in that novel. So check it out, Malcolm Mars. Support this broadcast. Go over there to uh, Amazon.com and you can pick it up. Or you can go to my website, JonathanSoul.com, and it'll take you over to Amazon. Jonathan Soul, J-O-H-N-A-T-H-A-N-S-O-U-L on Twitter. Subscribe to the show on iTunes. Uh, follow me on Tumblr and Twitter. Over there, in addition to the broadcast, you'll also get my other interests. Photography, architecture, gorgeous sisters you'll see over there, and anime. I got a really uh, serious interest in anime, particularly that Ghost in the Shell slash Cowboy Bebop slash, you know what I mean, uh, Black Lagoon. You know, just kind of a, a disport, you know, high tech, a little bit of dark uh, kind of vibration. But you definitely enjoy the images over there. Listen, guys, I love you guys. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I hope all your dreams come true. Find something that you enjoy as much as I enjoy doing this podcast. And you always guarantee some happiness in your life. Love you guys. Go for our dreams.